Through partnerships, the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail continues to be a journey as we preserve the places, stories, and landscapes for each new generation to discover. The Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail belongs to all of us. One of the really neat things about a trail, it's not just one spot in time. It's a very long story. It's a very rich story. This was an incredible adventure, but there were lots of obstacles. These stories are about people who overcame what others thought couldn't be done. President Jefferson, he invites you to join him in his great republic. I think the future is continuing to, to weave relationships, partnerships, because that is everything that is important to us. Because of the attention being paid to it, because the parks are encouraging and supporting, it's going to give us a rich road to walk uh, all the way out to the, to the ocean and back, just like Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail, partnerships for the future. In 1978, the Lewis and Clark Trail Heritage Foundation helped establish the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail. Today, the National Park Service staff serves as a resource to hundreds of partners along the 3,700 mile long trail, including nonprofit, tribal, local, state, federal, and private entities. We talk about this being a string of pearls from literally Monticello to the West Coast. But while all of us, our special places along the way, may be the jewels on that route, it is the National Park Service that is the string that binds us together. Welcome to Omaha. The role of the Park Service is not that of the owner of the trail. We're the administrator of the trail. And that really means that we have to work with other people. We have to coordinate with other people. And honestly, it's better if we do because you get different people, you get different perspectives, and it strengthens our ability to get things done. This is our monthly conference call, Trail Talk. Welcome. Partnering with them is so exciting because they care about the trail, and all of us along the trail itself care about the trail. But they have expertise that we don't have. What the Park Service has is kind of a pure interest in the trail. That experience is very valuable in terms of what they can bring to our trail. The time is ripe to promote and to protect and to celebrate what we have in our community and for the next generation. Lewis and Clark is a living history, a historic journey that continues to be told again every year through hundreds of reenactments and first-person interpretations of diverse perspectives along the trail. These performances bring history to life and give the audience a unique way to connect to the story. When I was in college, theater was a big part of my life. Once I got through law school, I decided I wanted to get back into performing. My name is Hassan Davis. I'm here to share the story of York, a uh, first-person interpretation of the only African-American member of the Lewis and Clark Expedition. I, I wanted to really do something that could entertain and educate at the same time, and this just became a great way to do that. The parks call me regularly and, and ask me to represent them as York, and so for me, that's a great honor. As far as costuming, I've got a really cool jacket. Visually, it really captures, it puts you right there. You, you know we're about to go on an adventure. It seemed like it took me about an hour to get that next shot loaded. The whole time, I think that band must be freezing right down the back of my neck, and I can't hear nothing, because my heart beat so fast and loud, it sounded like drums pounding my ears. York was a voice that wasn't commonly heard. If you go and look at all of the artwork in the exhibit hall, you'll see him there, but he's kind of quiet, he's silent in these paintings, in these drawings. So the idea with bringing Hassan here is, I think, helps us enrich in that story. It helps bring that voice alive. My name is York. Just York. They call him Big Medicine. They call him Black Indian. And when I started looking through the journals of the expedition themselves, they talk about his 
his participation. They talk about his engagement, they talk about his connection and, and being a part of a team. And so for the audience, this is about camaraderie and friendship and sacrifice. And at the same time, it's about disappointment and disillusionment and, and the pain of a, of, a, of a divided system that wouldn't allow a man to be as great as he dreamed. It's one thing to, to, I guess, to read about history, but to see it yeah. reenacted, it kind of, you know, brings it to life. Um, I actually cried. <laughs> it was just very touching. The power of his presentation makes you aware of what we were and what we are. In the broad scheme, you know, these stories are, are legendary. And what I like is telling those stories we don't know into the, the bicentennial. Native communities along the trail got to come in and tell their stories, and so it really did start some conversations. And that was a very unique set of partnerships that made it all happen. tribes are still here and they still have a strong voice. It's much more meaningful to the tribal representatives or the tribal historians that are there to share their own stories in their own words. They wouldn't say the same things in the same ways that a scholar would say. The consequence of leaving out even just a little bit of that story undermines what we did, what it meant to us. You're talking about emotions that are thousands of years old. And so it's a, it makes a difference. It really does. It is critical that we include American Indians, give them every opportunity to participate, and really try to create opportunities for them to tell the story with their voice and their perspective. And if we don't do that, we're not doing our job and we're not telling the story of the Lewis and Clark expedition. The preservation and interpretation of the trail is a result of partnership, collaboration, and a network of over 2,500 volunteers across the country. While the opportunities are vast, it is the detailed work of the thousands of volunteers that keep the trail alive. From taking tickets at a visitor's center, stuffing envelopes for a junior ranger packet, or picking up trash along the Missouri River, there are many ways people can volunteer. I've always been a water kid. Come on, doggy. Grew up in Louisiana, and so that brings a certain kind of water to your background. I think everyone can make a difference in their own community. So I started looking at ways to get involved on the Missouri, and I went to a meeting for Missouri River Relief's first cleanup in Kansas City. We're dealing with trash and education, and you don't ever have to stand up in a meeting and say trash is bad because everyone knows that, and so it's been a rallying cry for communities. Well, here's what you're gonna do. I think the first comment volunteers make is, oh my gosh, I had no idea. They expect to pick up cans and bottles and fishing line, and they don't realize that they're gonna pick up pianos and tires and refrigerators too. The other thing people say that always tickles me is, I had no idea it was gonna be fun because it's a blast. A, a smart People are interested in being part of something bigger. And the Park Service brings a ton of volunteers and that institutional knowledge you just can't get anywhere else that make these projects work. We are the, the headquarters for the trail, and we are the support for all of the people out doing the jobs every day. And if we aren't accessible to them, then a lot of this work would not get done. For an agency to say, we're gonna help you level that playing field, we're gonna put these, these initiatives behind doing this, just makes all the difference in the world. The person behind the desk cared, and that made a huge difference. If we did not have our volunteers, a lot of our visitor centers would not be open as much as they are to our public. It's a wonderful place to be a volunteer because everybody is very helpful and you get some good training. Thought it was time that I gave something back to the country. 
it keeps me active and alive. <laughs> Not only can volunteers volunteer in visitor centers, but they can also go out with resource managers to do habitat restoration, invasive species removal. They can go out and really be involved in helping the environment and maintain the natural part of the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail. From Camp Du Bois in Hartford, Illinois, to Fort Clatsop in Oregon, there are numerous visitor, interpretive, tribal, and cultural centers along the trail that offer people an opportunity to appreciate more detailed accounts of the Lewis and Clark journey. These centers are a primary resource for public outreach along the trail and serve as a great place to preserve and educate the next generation about the Lewis and Clark journey. There are many, many, many visitor centers along the trail, and some of them, their primary focus is Lewis and Clark, and they tell that story in the broad sense, but they also tell it just exactly what happened in their geographical area. So this is where they portaged around the, the Great Falls, and it was an arduous journey. And that's what this diorama depicts. The Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail Interpretive Center in Great Falls, Montana offers visitors a wide variety of opportunities to experience the trail and to learn about it. And it is run and managed by the U.S. Forest Service. And so that's a great example of a partnership also where we are able to share in telling this story. Here in that webinar, I've got some thoughts and ideas on that. So. The National Park Service is a great partner of ours because they are sort of, in some ways, the, the glue that holds this whole trail together. Well, I think the goals of the center are really to tell the story, to give people a taste of the story, but I'd like to think that in an interpretive center, it's a place where you can experience it in a way you haven't experienced it before, maybe a more physical way. Go! One, two, three, four, five. They do a remarkable job in their education programming. And they do have a full-time education coordinator at that site. So you know that they put a lot of time and effort into that. But so what are some symbols that we see in our society today? Because we're going to talk about Students that come in here after they've had a unit that their teacher's been working with them on, I mean, their hands are going up with every question. And they could give the tour themselves and like, oh, wow, that's the portage. You know, they've read about these things, they've heard about these things, but now they're, they're really getting a chance to see it come to life here at the center. She discovered Kids are intelligent. And you will see their wheels turn in and they will ask some, some pretty significant questions. And sometimes I think we don't give them enough credit. What do we got? Kind of long nails, but not a fun. He's got even crazier nails than you do. I'm a big fisherman. I fish a lot. <laughs> I gotcha. I like the Native American exhibit. There's something that happens to you when you are placed into it and, and can touch and feel it and see it in a different kind of a way. That's part of what an interpretive center can do. It can kind of help bring the story that's flat and two-dimensional uh, into a three-dimensional world and bring it into your heart a little bit and make it more meaningful to you. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. And that's interpretation. The story of the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail is a story of America, and the responsibility to protect it belongs to us all. I see the trail being alive in multiple ways. You'll see people recreating on it. You'll see transportation. Uh, you'll see a lot of different uh, uses of the trail. Everyone could experience it. Deciding how we preserve the trail for future generations continues to be a collaborative effort. The stories we have to tell are too important to be relegated just to a 200-year commemoration. We've got a great future. Everybody wants this story. It's a story that even places that haven't been touched by the expedition, this story is an American story that, that touches everybody. I ask you to hear of the things that I have seen. I think we all want to be explorers. I mean, I know I did when I was a kid. It's that adventure story that people just love. And I truly believe that once you've been on the Missouri, you don't drive over it the same way ever again. It's a can-do, wanna work together, cooperative kind of society. We are committed to this trail, and we are dedicated to seeing this trail grow 
and prosper and have more people involved in the protection and telling the story. In order to come in, you have to ring the doorbell. I really think that the future is working with people along the trail and continuing to look outward and continuing to focus on relationships and how we move forward and manage the trail. We just have great stories to tell and if we immerse ourselves in them, if we learn from them, who knows how we might be able to put that into practice to solve some of our problems of today. This video was produced to highlight the value of the many partners who preserve and protect the places, stories, and landscapes of the Lewis and Clark National Historic Trail. Thank you. Thank you.